And speaking of the National Cotton Council, this fall they are reminding everyone connected to the cotton industry about the importance of keeping their product free of contamination. Yeah, Ray, a few weeks ago I visited with one family that runs a cotton gin and I talked to them about their operation and the efforts in the ginning process to keep cotton free of contaminants. In central Georgia's Dooley County, the Coleys have been dealing in cotton since 1945 and Chuck Coley has seen a lot of changes in the industry over the years. This facility here, the uh, place we're here in Vianna, it was the original Southern Cotton Oil uh, Company plant that uh, I think it was built, started built in 1899, was completed in 1900 and it had a gin, bought peanuts, sold fertilizer, had a little feed meal, you know, back then it had a little bit of everything and uh, my granddaddy was a, uh, it came back, don't know, exactly, can't remember exactly what year, and it was a bookkeeper for him, and then he and my daddy bought this place from Southern Cotton Oil when they were divesting some of their interest in, uh, in 1945, and so we've been building on it. His son, Matt, said he understands the national effort to help cotton producers, and a big part of what they do is making sure that contamination isn't a problem with the cotton they process. He urges each person involved in every step of that process to do their part. Yeah, I think the, big, the biggest thing is uh, uh, growers and ginners need to be aware of, of, of what's going on. If you see plastic anywhere or any kind of contamination, you need to kind of stop what you're doing and, and readdress it because uh, we don't want quality to be an issue with Georgia cotton. Uh, there's going to be less cotton exported this year than it has before, so we got to make sure Georgia doesn't, doesn't get a bad rap on the quality side and nobody wants our cotton. Chris Shimon with Georgia's Cotton Commission told me even the smallest amount of plastic can cause problems. So contamination could be anything from uh, leather gloves that may fall off, um, pieces of plastic that are caught in the field, even things as small as a piece of plastic like this, when this goes through the gin, uh, this could get tore up into a thousand pieces or so and then that may infect a lot of bales. So um, something that may come out of your field may end up in your neighbor's bales just because of the way it goes through at the gin. Chuck Coley said he thinks it's great to have his son Matt working in the family business now and managing a large part of the cotton gin. So he's taking over a lot of the, uh, I tell a lot of people he's taking over part, uh, the parts of the operation that I don't like to do. Paperwork and uh, things like that but uh, dealing with insurance and FSA uh, uh, and but he's he, he's uh, he's been a, definitely an asset and been proud to have him back. Well, you know, I uh, I'm I'm always optimistic when it comes to cotton prices. Even it, when you when you got a gin and you're a farmer, you, you got to be. Um, but you know, the prices have taken a, a pretty good hit this year, and um, you know, we still got a ways before we get into next year. Um, you know, hopefully hopefully we can get the price to rebound a little bit so we can get some make sure we have plenty of, uh, plenty of cotton acres planted uh, next spring.